All right, American Horror Story Apocalypse, Episode Three: Forbidden Fruit. A uh, lot of lot of uh, Adam and Eve stuff going on in this episode for sure, obviously. So first off, we get you know this whole thing between Langdon and Mallory, and Mallory all of a sudden shows off that she's extremely powerful and. I think we can jump to these conclusions that she's a witch because at the end, you know, uh, the witches show up and, and Madison goes down. And she's like, you know, um, surprise bitch. I, I bet you thought you saw the last of me or something like that. And I don't know that. Yeah, maybe. But she could also be an angel. She says somewhere in here, like, I have no dark places. And she doesn't know who she is. She has no memory of this. But Michael Langdon and uh, Dina, Dinah, seem to know each other. How? I don't know. But she is one of the women that is resurrected here at the end of this episode. Um, and, I mean, he's just so blown away by Mallory's powers. Like, he is shocked. Like, who the hell are you? And she's like, I don't know. She, like, legit has no idea who the hell she is. And she's just as surprised as he is. But, like, when it first happens, he kind of turns around and I'm like, okay, what the hell? And she does it even more powerful, and he is shocked. Like you can see, this guy does not get surprised very often. So he goes and he does this ritual, and he's like, you know, hail Satan! And, uh, you know, he's uh, conjuring some stuff up, and he actually shows the face of himself, maybe his true form, or... Um, you know, he's turning into the devil. I, I don't know. He's the son of the devil. So uh, I think we finally get to see his, his true face there for a second. Um, I really like the flashbacks of, um, what's her name? Freaking, um, oh, Mer Meryl, no, freaking Miriam, right? And their name, Kathy Bates character. Anyways, um, so yeah, it's like flashing backs and she's playing like Rosie from the Jetsons because she's foreshadowing that she's a robot. But uh, whose memories are these? You know, uh, are they... Because, it's, because we learn in this episode that she's been modeled after someone who used to care for Michael Langdon. And yes, now people have corrected me enough to remind me that Michael Langdon was, uh, you know, the spawn... Uh, of the of characters from the first season, so then I remembered, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. And Jessica Lange's character, kind of, oh, I moved my camera, ha, huh. uh, kind of took care of that kid. So is she modeled after her? I don't know. But one thing I did really like was the fight scene, the the choreography and all that. That fight scene between those guys was really well filmed and really well shot. I really liked that scene. I was like, oh wow, this this action is actually pretty badass. Something I really didn't like, almost at all, was, uh, what's his damn name in this? Uh, is it Brooke? Bro Brock? Brock, yeah, yeah, yeah. The boyfriend of Coco. Like, his confrontation scene when they're outside with the cannibals, the, the mutated, whatever the hell these guys are, that shit was cheesy as fuck, man. It looked terrible. His, like, his makeup, his wig, that stuff all looks bad. That whole scene just was god-awful to me. And it actually really turned me off to the show this season um, for, like, a good, a good couple minutes. I was like, oh, man, I, I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm feeling this season. That shit was goofy as fuck. Well, whatever. Uh, I kind of got over it, especially once my girl finally came in. I've been waiting Emma Roberts is finally here, and she's acting like she, uh, she's acting, it's funny because when she talks to, um, freaking Mallory, who is, uh, you know, also in Scream Queens with Emma Roberts, um, it, it just, the way she talked to her, I was like, whoa, is it Scream Queens all of a sudden? Very much felt like that. I, I'm a huge fan of Scream Queens. I thought the first season especially was hilarious, um, but then, yeah, Brock sneaks in, Trojan horse style, and he goes down and grabs Coco, and Coco's like, I'm going to give you fucking ass to mouth. I'm going to give you analingus. I, was, I had to, like, I rewound it. I was like, what the fuck did she just say? 
And that's anal lingus. Oh my god, dude. That's like a rim job? She's offering this guy a fucking rim job to get in to the sanctuary. This girl is dedicated, man. Holy shit. Um, but that stab in the head, that was that was pretty uh that was pretty awesome. It just kinda came out of nowhere. And then we get this huge massacre where these guys get the apples, of course, more Adam and Eve and the and the snakes, snakes and the apples, very Adam and Eve. Um and they infect these or they poison the apples, uh Snow White style, give it to them, and they're freaking viciously vomiting. I mean, the one dude vomits blood all over his girlfriend's face. Uh, that was great, and they all just, it's such a gross scene, um, but Red Delicious, ugh, who wants Red Delicious apples, okay, you can freaking bring in some apples, bring in some honey crisps. who's with me, those are the best apples on earth, anyways, un- unnecessary information, but I'm a big, I'm a big honey crisp fan, okay, I have one like every single day, I mean, so. um, and yeah, I thought it was interesting that she was watching... When they went to the theater, they saw Rosemary's Baby, which is obviously about birthing the Antichrist. So a little nod there to Michael Langdon. Um, and he says somewhere in here that he's building a new world. He says it to Dinah, and he says something like, um, you're just the kind of soul I need to build my new world. So is he the guy who went around to all the outposts? It, did they actually get overrun, or is he the one who went in and killed all? Of, I would expect that he's the one who's been taking the souls of all of these people. Um, and uh, bobbing for apples, a little callback right there to the first season. I do remember that um, Zachary Quinto's character did that in the first season. So I don't know if that's supposed to be a nod. I'm, I'm going to guess it probably is. Um, and uh, you know we we finally yeah we get the witches we get the witches from the first se- or from uh, season three coven coming back in here which is really cool because it's it's like here's Venable and Venable goes in and he's like you made the cut like you killed everyone I'm proud of you and she still tries to kill him and 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 uh, freaking Miriam right that's her freaking name right yeah Kathy Bates she's like take him out kill him and then. He obviously has control over her, and he was, she was in. She was in, but it was the perfect timing. She had to be killed so that Sarah Paulson could switch over and play her other character. But uh, all these guys are dead, uh, except for the people. But let's not count them out yet, because it is definitely possible that Langdon himself can resurrect some of these guys as his little minion demons. I mean, he already has... Uh, Kathy Bates, but I, I could see him resurrecting, you know, the a couple of the people that he was already going to push through, like Gallant or something. Um, so it's possible. I don't know. Maybe not, but because they came in and breathed the life into these guys, it's possible he could bring other characters back. So I'm not exactly sure they'll be for sure gone, um, but we already know the three that we got back. And... Uh, it also fixed um, Mallory's vision, um, which uh, didn't it like fix a heart condition in uh, Madison's character in season three or something. So that's staying kind of consistent. Bringing back people from the dead makes them even stronger, I guess. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? Um, and how the hell they know each other. I mean, as I said, yeah, you could think like, oh, she's a witch or whatever. But um, I'll be very curious to see how that plays out. Uh, I'm so, I'm sorry. I'm so late on this episode. I, I've been moving, as you can see, as you know. Um, I tried to get to it as quick as I could. I'm trying to go through my notes here. See if I missed anything. Made sure that I wrote down Honeycrisp because that's something you guys really needed to know about me. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, I don't know. There's things I really enjoyed about this episode, like the, all the characters dying and Coco getting a knife in the head and all that was so unexpected. Um, I definitely didn't think they were all going to eat the apples and die. I didn't think she was going to take a knife to the head or anything of that stuff. So, but she's back. Um, and, you know, they resurrected her and her wounds are gone and all that. So, um, 
yeah, I, I'll, I'll definitely be curious to see. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm rambling at this point. So anyways, guys, let me know what you thought about the episode. I just, I, I guess I'm all over the place because I was kind of all over the place with this episode. There was, there was things I was enjoying and there was other things that were just a little too damn goofy for me. And it was taking me out of the moment. But let's see what happens next episode. All right, guys.